Hey, welcome back. This is Joyride Labs and I'm working on this Stealth Bomber Enduro mid-drive e-bike. Big mouthful. Uh, those of you who are coming back, you've seen me kind of work on this project so far. Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, I'm midway through working on the project and I'm bringing you guys along with it. So it's going well. Uh, hint, hint, if you haven't noticed, my hair is cut now and it's not in the video. So this is Future Cory, And Future Cory is already taking a bike on a few test rides and is super happy with how things are going. So if you want to see more on how this bike comes to fruition, how it's built and all that, please stay tuned. Consider liking it and subscribing if you want to see more videos like that. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them in the comments. I'd love to engage and communicate with all of you. See you guys around. Cheers. Back. So, battery enclosure. These have been 3D printed and uh, they are in pieces as it's too big to print in one slot. So we'll get this attached up to something like this. Hold on. It bolts together to those holes and uh, we'll start fitting that onto the frame. See what that looks like. thing is it's been reconfigured a few times now but um, BMS this is for active balancing I'll add that in later and yeah so the idea power switch and then charge and output either or the idea was it would end up something like this Ooh, come on you gonna fit Yes, it does. Kind of. Let's just go out for now. Yes. Let me find. Stagger my seams. Something like that was the idea. So. Fits. That's good for now. Save myself the problem of lugging this around. <clears throat> for now we'll just leave this an empty shell. This is the bottom. It's got. Um, I'm not sure if you can see weeping holes. The idea, if it gets water in here, um, hopefully it'll drain out through those. And these guys. That. That. Should, theoretically. Oh, just like that. Beauty.
timer died, but I kept doing some work. So um, what we had before was something similar to this. I got this part sent out by, well, cut through uh, Send, Cut, Send. The only difference um, to this mounting plate was I um, didn't make this large enough and I didn't have a rotating table, so I had to just kind of chunk this out. You'll see that on the other. So from this, I removed that there, this here, something like that. And we added the extra mounting plate. So that's what we ended up with now, painted. Very fancy. And for the, uh, this is like the actual part that mounts to the motor and this mounts to the mounting plate and allows for the pivot. Uh, we moved the hole up so that it had more clearance and that's what I got here. Painted it as well. It's still got the uh, bolts I put in there to protect the threads. So um, hopefully that's created the clearance that I'm looking for. Um, I think that's about as reasonable as it comes for what I can take off of this plate. just a bit short in all the places I would ideally like it to go. I mean, I can cut the size a little bit on here, this, but I don't think it's going to be enough to get what I want, um, at least inside the frame. And then my other thought was down here, how a lot of the other bikes are. Um, but I'm concerned about range of motion with the fork and the front tire crushing this. So, I think a fun exercise will be to reassemble most of this bike, put the wheels on, put the fork back on, handlebars on, get to see what it kind of looks like uh, form wise, all put back together. And then uh, I can actually clamp this on, compress the fork, see if the wheel hits it and where it needs to be to make that all happen. So I think that's the plan. And uh, hopefully that gets me some answers. I really would wish it fit in here. I feel like I'm always like quarter inch, three mil off like what I need size wise. I just, I don't know, the way my brain looks, I try and cram as much stuff in as I can in the tight space. And I'm always just that three mil short. It's really frustrating. But that being said, we'll see if we'll, what we gotta do to make this work. So that's kind of the geometry <sighs> we're looking at. I think the geometry is a little weird on this thing, but I mean, it's kind of this weird cross between bike and dirt bike. It's kind of like between Suron and e-bike undercover. I have taken this opportunity to put the chain on, get this sprocket on, which is nice. See it all moving and uh, find out all the things I didn't think about. So one, <laughs> there's obviously a clearance issue here when this pedal goes by this battery box. So um, I have to offset a little bit that way, but it's not too bad. I can actually get by. So I didn't think about that, but uh, Lux got past it, got me past it. But what I also forgot to think about which I've had issues in the past with battery alignment here, actually. Obviously. Is uh, in the way of the chain. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, I've run into this before a little bit. And. How did I fix it? I think I just kind of let the battery rub a little bit. I put a protective pad back here. It was less, not as bad as this. Um, I do, however, have an idler, which I've used in the past, different chain tensioning systems or temps of chain tensioning systems before I switched to, um, the ability to tension the chain with this pivot. 
And I think really this is my only option now is to kind of come in here like that. And it's so, yeah, that's now my chain path, which I'm not very excited about, to be honest. Um, now the chain's bending around this small diameter up here. And um, I've added complexity by putting a sprocket. My experience is the more sprockets you put in, the more noise you get and the more uh, potential issues you run into. But at this point, the way this bike is built, um, I do not see a way to get around this. Um, there is one benefit though. When you wrap so significantly around the sprocket like this, it obviously makes it quite difficult to jump the chain for this chain to fall off, which allows you to run the chain a little bit looser. I can already see that's going to cause conflict with this bolt, but I can probably just run with these. That's not really an issue. Um, so uh, hopefully that will allow me to run the chain a little bit looser here. Um, and in my experience, that helps prolong the chain life. Um, yeah. All right, so seeing everything together is uh, made me reconsider some things. I did like this double stacked look when it fit like this, or ideally when it was in the frame. Now I know for sure I can't fit it in the frame. I could shrink these things down, but uh, I worry. I always shrink things down and then I'm just crammed on space and everything else suffers before because of it. The wiring's not great. Things don't have enough space. So I want to rethink some stuff. Um, one, I think I'm not going to go with this for the controller enclosure. Uh, instead, I've been mocking up some computer-aided design here, or sorry, cardboard-aided design. I think I'm gonna put a, um, something like this. This will go on the other side, and then a top plate. So inside of this sheathing, we'll call it, um, I wanna put a capsule that's about this size, and it will have the bolt holes and standoffs that will allow mounting um, panels. So a panel will come on here and it will basically mount onto the inner uh, you know, enclosure. And that inner enclosure is also gonna hold the electronics. So I think that'll kind of give a nicer look. I like this kind of style. And then this panel on the top, I'll have a panel that comes all the way you know, across. Uh, with polycarb or I'll print something or I don't know some other material and essentially the sides will kind of have this profile as we're looking at it on the inside will be the enclosure I think this space um, will give me enough space to do the wiring I like and I ho I'm hoping to do uh, it'll just have to be a little three-dimensional I'll have to stack some stuff like this and some stuff will kind of layer up on this side but that's totally fine I think that's a much better solution so, once again, once you see things in real life, it kind of uh, changes your perspective a bit. And I also really do like it coming up, mounting this place. It kind of hides the motor a little bit. And I think, um, if not on this side, on the other side, I'll have a cutout in the panel to allow the motor, because the motor sticks through on the other side, to stick out a little bit and maybe even have some kind of covering uh, to protect myself from the motor and maybe even scoop in some air. I would like to start to see it on the other side. As I'm moving forward, air to come in and inject itself into the motor, help keep it cool. Um, so yeah, I think this platform allows me to do that. I think it looks more cohesive as a product that way. So I'm gonna redesign all that. And this, I've had the opportunity to play with and I've dropped it a few times. I've been rough with it. And as you can see, I've broken off some edges. This side's completely got a little cockeye. And a lot of that's because I just didn't give myself enough tolerance on these end caps. 
but I think it's also a symptom of the printing orientation of the printer, like the lines this way allows it to split evenly in this direction. Um, I'm thinking instead of using these fasteners as I have here to hold it together, I'm gonna print in a vertical orientation. So it'll just print like this and it won't require me to have these fasteners here um, to hold it together and the battery will slide in instead of um, being closed in like this with the bolts. Um, it makes it a simpler product. There's um, less fasteners involved. It'll be lighter weight because of that. And yeah, I think I prefer that method. I think it's going to be stronger in the orientation I prefer. And for the seam, I think I can just take what I learned with this one and just apply this style seam to the sleeves. I guess we'll just kind of sleeve in like this. And I think that'll be plenty strong. So yeah, that's my plan. I think one side of this can be printed flat. It'll allow like a good print surface on the ground as it um, comes up. And yeah, that or I'll have inserts. I know on one side for sure I'll have to have an insert. So I have some CAD work to do and I'll get going that on the printing. This seems like about 20, 30 hours of printing my idea. So it's going to take some time to do, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so I want to get started on that, get things printing, and then I'm going to come back. And now I have a better idea of how this all exists in the frame and how it will look. And I think I'm going to do some structural uh, supports through here for the frame and then I want to get the frame painted up and ready to be uh, yeah painted ready to be like more of a final assembly because theoretically once I get back I'll be able to do the wiring on my battery wiring in the electronics enclosure and I should be able to hopefully test ride it I'm also gonna uh, have to add the idler to this plate as well yeah so some steps forward, a few steps backwards, but I think ultimately we're working in the right direction. I do like this look. Come in here, that's the other side. I do like this style, and uh, I think it's more better direction. So.